what I'm going to do here is go ahead and show some of the clubs. Most of I've still got some more in the garage that are in my collection. And when you see this, the reason I'm doing it is to show you different variations in clubs. Because often people will say this design is bad or that's not good or I don't like. And that's really a personal preference. I have every pretty much size and weight that you can imagine when it comes to lifting clubs. There's also a lot of fallacy and exaggeration in the weights that people are lifting and the weights in which people think that a club is. A lot of it's guesswork and or the exaggeration of people from different cultures telling you that a club weighs a particular weight when it really in fact does not. I'm going to show you a bunch of different clubs and I want you to keep two things in mind when you look. One is I want you to notice the difference in, this, in the handles in every different set of clubs. I want you to look at how thin some of them appear. I want you to look at how long some appear, how thick they are, how big the balls are on the end, or in some cases no ball on the end of the club whatsoever, so that you can get a better idea. I personally like something I can grip a hold of. I don't like too big of a knob like this. It interferes with my wrist. This is actually perfect, probably one of the best sets of clubs that I've ever seen. Some people may not like the thinner handle. This is an original set of meals from Iran. Note the handles they put on those. This is a set that I had made and I tried to make them as close to what I had seen done in India as possible. This is a set I got from a fella in um, England who makes excellent clubs. The Sheffield Club Turning. They're really nice clubs. I like the handles. Everything about them. These are antiques, as you can probably tell. Probably early 1900s. Again, that's all guesswork again. Check the handles out on these. These clubs made down in Texas by a company down there that does woodworking and used to make swords. Now it's gotten into the club swinging fabrication business. These are one of my favorite pairs right here. These are made probably the early 1800s. They say a pound and a quarter. It's another misnomer. Half the time you read the weights on these clubs are not even close to what they really weigh in many cases and or the clubs are very seldom balanced. This is what I call the eggplant shape. I shared this with a company in Texas. These were duplicates made from a pair that I had and gave them the dimensions on a set of clubs I got from Iran. So usually when you see Persian meals, you'll either see them, they'll be in this shape right here, or they'll be in this shape right here. Something similar to this. Maybe not exact, but similar. These clubs, somebody was sort of a bad attempt at trying to make Persian meals. They're still fine to swing. They weigh five pounds. Now here's something you're going to find very interesting. These clubs here, these clubs here, if you look at the difference in size, actually weigh very close to the same amount of weight. And this is something I wanted to point out. People are looking at photographs of people online with huge clubs, and they're making all these statements as to what the clubs weigh, when in actuality they really don't know. They're just parroting or repeating what somebody else told them. There's a famous picture online, Persian photo, of a fella, a Palavan, Tutsi or Tusi or something lifting 60 pound clubs. Well, I personally know a man that knew him and lived in Iran and is a Palavan, and he told me that he has never in his entire life ever seen a pair of clubs in Iran that weighed more than more than 40 pounds. Now, granted, he didn't go everywhere and didn't visit everyone and didn't lift every set of, but the club that people claim are 60 pounds online, 30 kilos or whatever, uh, he's saying it's just absolutely not true. So, I've been lifting clubs for a while. Even these little 32 pounders right here, I've seen very few people that can ever even swing them, let alone get them up and hold them for any length of time. I'm not saying a person couldn't build themselves up to that, but what I am saying is that the, depending upon the material that the clubs are made of, it can be extremely deceiving how much these things weigh. But I'll go back to 
one of the biggest questions that every single human being asks me, and I get it all the time, is what do those clubs weigh? Really does it matter? If you can't lift them, if you can't manage them well, I suggest most people start with a pair of clubs like these that are they're about 10 pounds each. They're really great if you want to get into heavier club swinging. You really can't get the swing from a lighter 5-pound set that you can from a 10-pound set. You just can't. The, if you'll notice the length of the handles and the length of the clubs as well as the weight and the shape. The shape's important. I believe the bottoms of clubs were rounded off like this. If you'll notice many of these clubs, those are a little bit rounded but not quite. Those are very much rounded. If we'll go up here and look at these meals, you'll see there, if you look at the difference in these clubs, these dark ones, very much rounded, the brown ones, very much rounded. It's more of a design, this is more of an Indian shape, more of a cone. I think they rounded off the corners simply so they wouldn't break off. I don't think there's any other real reason for it. It doesn't make it any easier to swing or less. It's just, I think, a preference. Some people, the fellow that makes these clubs, says he doesn't like grooves in the handles or grooves in the wood. Well, personally, I do. I think that grooving the wood like this makes it enhances the look of the club. As with these, it enhances the shape and the wood. It just gives it, rather than just being a bland club. Now, there's doesn't change the effect of the swinging at all. It's just personal preference. So let's go down this real quick. We're going to go up and back. I'm going to show you many different varieties of clubs. These clubs here are made out of bamboo. I don't know if you can tell that from the photo, from the video. These next clubs are made out of ipe, which is extremely hard wood from South America. The next club is actually the first set of clubs I was ever given by anybody. He got them from a junk pile. They were going to throw them out, probably from the early 1900s, late 1800s. This is really what got me sort of interested or started in this. Here's a pair of hickory. I believe they're two pound clubs. Here's another antique set of clubs. Here's another really unique set of antique clubs. You look at the way that they did that uh, meshing of the wood. They've laminated it together. These I tried as an experiment were small ball bats, short single hand bats for uh, practicing uh, baseball swings. These were originally made by Motion RX. They're little tiny clubs. You can see the Motion RX sign on them. Nothing wrong with those. They were made out of acacia. They were made in India. I spoke to the man that made them. You used to be able to buy them for $6 a piece. These next clubs are ones that I produce. These are made out of oak. And they weigh just short of two pounds. I wanted a shape that was easy to ship complimentary, used less wood, cut down on the cost of production so I could give them to people at a reasonable price. The next pair of antiques are one of my favorites. These pair I had custom made. They were prototypes. This next pair is antique. More antiques. Again, keep looking at the handles and look at the difference in the handles and how different people configure the handles. These were made in Texas. Look how thin these handles are. They were either probably for children, women, or for club more for club twirling. Now we'll look at some larger clubs. By the way, this is one of the ways I transport clubs. If any of you guys are into teaching large groups of people. This is a bottle carrier used for Gatorade bottles by hockey teams. And I came up with that idea because I got simply got tired of throwing so many pairs in the back of my car. This next pair, 28 pounds. These are monsters to swing. I know what people are going to tell you. Oh, weight. All has to do with the weight. These are very long clubs. They're over 30 inches long. And they're uh, they're beautiful. They're, they have a furniture grade finish to them. They're absolutely beautiful. They're a pleasure to swing. I actually like the handles. At first I didn't. But if you'll notice, I swing thick and thin. People today are big on thick handles. Well, thick handles are great and they build your grip in one way. But honestly, most tools aren't made with thick handles. Most things we do in life don't have thick handles. The second pair of the red ones were given to me by the man that trained me's wife after he passed away. Mustafa had a number of different sets of clubs. These were the last set of clubs that he ever owned. These are a pair I got from a local Polyvon recently. 
they're absolutely beautiful the paint on them is actually writing their prayers this next set is the first set of meals I ever owned I just thought I'd share all this with people because I keep getting questions about clubs and handles and weights and sizes and configurations and honestly you can do this any way you want there isn't any one right way to do anything the antique another set of antiques new or contemporary those ones in the back are five pounds the ones in the front I think are three these are they say one and a quarter but they might be a little bit more and or less those dark eggplant are 10 pound I believe 5 pound 32 pound 30 some odd pound I don't know exactly a little over 30 pounds 10 pounds these are really pretty guy made these for me at a locust wood and sent them as a gift to me I get that stuff occasionally from people to reciprocate and here is another set of antiques so there you have it those are just some of the clubs that I do have <laughs> I don't know, four or five other pairs in different rooms or around the property, but I usually keep a pair in the garage that I throw around and have two or three in storage, but there's my small collection. I hope this was informative.